Guys, I messed up. The other day I made a video about the large ships of the Republic Navy. I thought the video was pretty comprehensive and overall pretty good, based mostly on information from the excellent Essential Guide to Warfare. So you can imagine my surprise when I found while researching my Executor versus Asserter matchup, which by the way was supposed to come out today but needs a bit more work, that the Republic actually had another battlecruiser type the Maelstrom. A quick Google search confirmed my suspicion that this ship only really appears in the source I was reading, 2016's Lead by Example, a supplement for the Age of Rebellion RPG guide, which by the way came out four years after the Essential Guide to Warfare. So let's break down the vessel based on what little we're told. The Maelstrom, which was unsurprisingly a Kuat driveyard's design, was related to the Venator and Acclimator class cruisers, however much more powerful, representing the largest and arguably most impressive vessel within the Republic Navy at the time of its introduction. This suggests to me that they were purpose-built for the Navy and entered service before the Mandator 1, a dreadnought type which served more or less ceremonially as part of the Kuat defense fleet before being sold to the Republic. The Maelstrom was described as, and I quote, armed to the teeth and heavily armored, created to inspire awe in allies and dread in enemies. It was optimized for fleet command with secondary fleet carrier and planetary siege capabilities. This is an interesting difference from, say, the Venator, which, although used in a frontline role, was more appropriately a carrier. However, despite its specialization, the Maelstrom could bring with it over 120 starfighters and enough assets to wage a full-scale ground assault. Unfortunately, we have no pictures of this behemoth, but it's described as having a long, thin, and heavily armored cranked delta hull with graceful twin command suites. So I imagine it sort of like a larger secutor, without however the straight edges. Given its command function, the Maelstrom also possessed advanced sensors, however I really do think that the main point of interest for the battlecruiser is its weapons. Like the Venator, it uses both broadside and forward facing gun emplacements, while it also uses torpedo and missile launchers somewhat uniquely in batteries as its primary point defense system. Also somewhat unique is that it uses heavy missile launchers for planetary bombardment, rather than traditional turbolasers, as was the case with other Republic ships like the Acclimator. In total, the battlecruiser was armed with 20 heavy turbolaser batteries. That means it had far more and more powerful guns than something like the Venator, and this is some impressive damage output for the era. It also had 30 combined ion cannons and batteries, proton torpedo launchers, and that unique concussion point defense system. The anti-fighter weapons were spread evenly across the craft, as were the heavy turbolasers, while the assault launchers were placed on the ship's ventral side. The Maelstrom was also known for having exceptionally tough shielding and hull strength. The text continues, stating that the battlecruiser suffered from the same issues that would plague large ships throughout galactic history, primarily the fact that it was slow and difficult to both man and maintain. The Republic would instead turn to more versatile and flexible attack ships like the Victory Star Destroyer, which was described as being significantly faster. Interestingly, the Victory was known for being slow. Despite being smaller than the ISD-1, it was actually significantly slower. That really paints a picture for the Maelstrom, a slow, battering ram type ship, especially when you consider its heavy weapons. That makes the Maelstrom good for something like planetary sieges, assaulting a space station, or taking on a large force, but it's really out of its element in other situations. Its sluggish Class 3 hyperdrive also further lessened its utility. Few Maelstroms ever saw service, although interestingly, the Alliance discovered and made use of one known as the Simum. Sadly, we don't get any pictures or even diagrams of the vessel, but we do know that it costs 158 million credits. That's two and two thirds times more expensive than a Venator or a Victory Star Destroyer, 22 times more expensive than a Dreadnought Heavy Cruiser, and slightly more expensive than an Imperial Star Destroyer. Though of course, credits in the Star Wars universe are notoriously inconsistent, especially when talking about military hardware. And that's the Maelstrom, a fitting ship I think, not only because of its in-universe description, but also because of its place within the lore. It appears very late in Star Wars Legends continuity, after the effective EU purge in fact, while also specifically not being mentioned in the Essential Guide to Warfare or other key texts. That, along with its strange weapon configuration, makes it feel somewhat tacked on to the lore. 
There's also the fact that the ship was supposedly introduced late into the Clone Wars as it was almost immediately phased out by the victory, but somehow was the biggest ship when introduced, despite the existence of the Mandator line, which we know was around for some time as the Republic not only made use of the Mandator 1, but a redesigned and upgraded Mandator 2. So all in all, it feels pretty careless and messy, again, much like a maelstrom. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think of this ship. Do you like the fact that the Republic in lore had all of these large capital ships despite the fact that we never see them in action or does it just seem a little tacky? I'm also curious how long you imagine the Maelstrom being as well as what it would look like. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. The matchup you guys voted on, the Executor versus the Asserter, will be coming tomorrow or the next day, so make sure you've got that notification bell rung because a lot of you guys voted for it. Anyway, until next time, this has been Eckhart Slatter, may the Force be with you.